Hello, I'm Porto Burns, and welcome to Porto Land. Today we are not looking at a hentai, because, well, I dove into my collection of hentais, and there's like three that are worth talking about, so I'm going to save them for later. Instead, today we are looking at a porn story. Yeah, like a text document. It's a whole cottage industry. Now, because this is a text-based porno, I'm not going to put up a picture of a text document. That would just be words for you to look at. I'm going to put some illustrative pictures over here sometimes, but for the most part, today you just get to look at my pretty mug. So the story is called The Hottest New Mobile Game, and it takes place in Britain in the future after a devastating Third World War. This war was so devastating that all parties involved had to call it quits because they were running out of citizens to, you know, have jobs and run stuff. So now the world's in this bizarre little population's arms race where they keep trying to incentivize their citizens to breed so they have more people to go to war with. The focus of this sexy little tale is Emily, a nice girl with no noteworthy features because this story is really more about the setting than it is the characters. Her best friend Anna turns her on to this new game called Sexville, the hottest new mobile game. Roll credits. Sexville doesn't actually sound like a bad game. You buy upgrades with points, you send your avatar out at night to hook up with other player avatars, and if they succeed, you get more points to buy upgrades. Standard freemium economy here. But the catch is that the game has access to the medical implant that apparently everyone has, and you get bonus points if you yourself go out at night and have sex. Like, it detects the hormones you release when getting sexed, and awards you in-game points that you use to make it easier for your virtual self to get laid. Pretty significant bonuses, too. I mean, look at this table. She gets like 21 points for her virtual self failing to get laid, but then Emily gets 500 points for herself getting laid. So you can clearly see how this game is stacked toward getting its players laid, and I'm also pretty sure you can clearly see where this is going. Now I'm gonna dive into some game theory stuff here and let it be known that I did not study this stuff in college. Most of what I'm about to tell you is absorbed from the lovely folks over at Extra Credits, pluggo pluggo. So let's talk about the Skinner Box. So the Skinner Box is an experiment where you put a rat in a box with a lever that sometimes will dispense food. And that chance of dispensing food is key to making that rat push that lever again and again and again and again and again. This theory of behavior is the driving force behind World of Warcraft and many free-to-play mobile titles. But whereas most of those games use this theory to extract money from their player base, Sexville's goal seems to be to get people laid. To what end? Well, we'll get there. So Emily is getting into her sexy groove and generally enjoying herself being a sex-positive female, maybe getting a little too into the scoring of Sexville, often checking her results immediately after boning. But of course, it's Anna who gets the next ball rolling with the cream pie bonus, which is worth just as much as the sex bonus, so you're basically doubling your points for the same amount of effort. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. Shortly after, Anna stumbles across the pregnancy multiplier. Not even fucking kidding, all those huge sex bonuses get tripled if you're already pregnant. At this point, the story starts careening into absurdity. Emily lets herself get knocked up for what amounts to video game high score. Eight months later, the working world of Britain has had to institute sex breaks so that people can bone more efficiently during work hours. Emily is approaching eighth on the national leaderboard, and a little government icon has appeared on the Sexville app. Oh yes! This whole game has turned into a government-sponsored breeding program, so they'll have enough of a disposable population to go back to war first. Wow! This porn story just went full-on satirical takedown of free-to-play mobile games. I am literally rolling out of my chair in shock. I cannot deal with how savage this takedown is. You think you can resist the psychological machinations of a free-to-play mobile game? Ha! No one can resist bonus points! Yeah, it's nothing that could actually happen in real life, but that's the point of satire, to illustrate the absurdities of life with outlandish scenarios. Honestly, you should read this for the point it's satire alone, cuz the porn's not that good. It's not very well written sex, with most of the sex scenes being shockingly short. We went to his place and stripped our clothes off. The sex was fantastic. He really hit that itch inside, and I got a really warm feeling as he rolled off me. It's no Shakespeare, but it's also not as bad as Fifty Shades of Grey. At its worst, it's uninvolving. 
Basically, the only way this is going to turn you on is if women going out of their way to get pregnant is a big turn on for you. I'm actually going to include a link down in the description to this story because I really think you should give this a read, especially if you've ever been burned by some free-to-play mobile game that just tries to suck the cash out of your wallet by stopping your progress with disgusting timers. Honestly, this episode did not go how I thought it would. The whole joke of this show is the absurdity of clinically dissecting porn, but in this one there just wasn't much porn. I honestly feel like I should do more. I guess I could do a review of one of my own privately recorded pornos. It's not ready yet. Oh. Carry on then. Uh, till next time, I'm Porno Burns, and this has been Pornoland. Uh. uh.